even though he runs a show called Piers Morgan Uncensored. He censored me, a Muslim journalist. There's many voices which he censors. He's no champion of free speech. He's actually a cancel culture crusader. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, sister, and welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, get to speak to you, especially this, uh, in this timely manner, because as uh, I'm sure you're aware, um, Piers Morgan has caused great offence to uh, Muslims in specific comments that he made in a recent interview with a Muslim doctor, um, not just about the Palestine issue and the genocide in Gaza, but he said some really weird stuff about Islam and uh, things about um, female female converts to Islam. So this is why I wanted to speak to you. MashaAllah for your beautiful family and uh, of course inshallah I'll be praying for them and their uh, success in everything inshallah. But uh, let me ask you about your reaction to the Piers Morgan interview. What did you make of it? I actually was quite shocked. You saw that Doctor also laughed during it and I actually laughed because I was that baffled. I was like, what is going on? Piers Morgan's ignorance and Islamophobia just became so apparent during that interview. He was not impartial or fair at all. And edit to the Doctor, he was so calm and polite and they could have had a really intelligent conversation, you know, if Piers had just sort of calmed himself down and like not allowed his prejudices to betray him live on air. I mean, he was calling the doctor an extremist for holding the same views about Hamas as Piers holds about the IDF, except the IDF have eliminated so many more people. I mean, why is it not okay to condemn the IDF, but it's okay to condemn Hamas? It's okay to label them as extremists, but not the IDF? Is it a Muslim, non-Muslim thing? I think it was very obvious that he has got prejudices against Muslims and against Islam and he was using you know words like jihad and just twisting the context and he didn't have enough information about Sharia law about Islam to really be saying the things that he was saying and I think the doctor was really trying to explain himself but he wasn't giving the doctor much leeway to explain what he had to say it was horrible to watch actually it was really quite sad to watch and if I was a doctor I think I would have caught up and left eventually because it would have been like what is the point you're just attacking me this isn't a two-way conversation Islam is the only religion that gives women rights to an education, property rights, rights to inheritance, freedom of marriage and divorce. You know, similar rights weren't available to women in Europe before Islam came. In Islam, you know, we're told to respect the laws of the countries we live in, even if they're not Sharia law. And I think that was another thing he was trying to say to him, you know, do you want Sharia law in this country? And it's not as easy as to say a yes or no answer because as Muslims, we believe Sharia law is the right way to live. Like you said, Piers Morgan obviously doesn't know what he's dealing with, right? Things like Sharia, Islamic law, jihad. This is Islam that we're talking about here. You can't be a Muslim and not believe in those concepts because they they are Islam. Like that's what Islam is. It's like saying, "Oh, I'm a Muslim and uh, I I condemn uh, the five daily prayers" or something like that. It's like you can't disconnect the two. So when Piers Morgan was grilling a Muslim guest for oh what a surprise believing in Islam, I don't think he understood how offensive. Uh, his line of questioning actually was. And in specific, one thing I want to ask you about specifically is when he started to mock female converts to Islam, basically suggesting, oh, maybe they convert because they want to be oppressed. Uh, is that what uh, the, uh, what you believe in kind of thing? Now, uh, let me get your reaction to that specifically. As a, as a Muslim woman watching this, someone who you know wears the hijab as well, perhaps you know many female converts to Islam, I don't know, uh, what did you make of that? Because I thought that that would have rubbed off very badly for, for Muslims watching that, especially females. Yeah, again, when he said that, I was taken aback. He was like, oh, maybe they like to be oppressed. And I was like, you don't know. It was so obvious the way that his thinking actually is. It came across so obviously this time. And I was shocked because usually he does have a censorship to himself. You know, even though his show is called Uncensored, it's clear that he has been censoring himself. And this was fully Piers Morgan Uncensored. Again, I do know Muslim converts and I thought about them when he said that and when, you know, the doctor was saying about so many women are converting to Islam and he's right there are I've spoken to so many women especially since doing this and they find so much peace 
from the religion. There's so many that are coming onto YouTube now. They're definitely taking it more seriously than a lot of born Muslims, unfortunately, because born Muslims take the religion for granted. When we look at oppression, I don't think Muslim women are oppressed. As a Muslim woman, I'm not oppressed. You know, I think I have more knowledge on the matter than Piers Morgan does about Muslim women being oppressed. The way the West has not just shown Muslim women, but just in general Muslims as extremists, as women that are oppressed. That's where a lot of his knowledge comes from is from mainstream media and that's not true if you actually looked at Islam women are celebrated and the rights that women have and why we wear the hijab as a Muslim woman I have a right to work it's my choice I have the right to a marriage or divorce I actually have more rights I think in the marriage than my husband does my husband and I we have clear roles it's actually why a lot of Muslim marriages work if you look at the divorce rates in western nations they are sky high if you look at abortion rates they're sky high. If you look at STD rates for women especially, all of these things are really high because a lot of Western women are, I think, oppressed and I don't think they realise they're oppressed. They're oppressed by the system. They're oppressed by showing lots of skin to get the attention of men. Fornicating, working in the SEX industry, they're drinking alcohol, they're taking intoxicants. They're not really sure about who they are and that's because they're oppressed by the system. Whereas as Muslim women, I do genuinely believe that we're respected. We've got a lot of freedom and we know our place we know our role and our role is a mother and a wife in the home and if you choose to work that is your choice we have financial rights we have you know property rights like I said it's not as black and white as Pierre said yeah it was sad to see him say that and if there were women that were considering converting and then watched that they might have taken a step back and gone you know I should look more into this I don't want to be oppressed and he's got a big voice and he should be careful about what he says what I do find from my own experience experience is when Islam comes under attack from, it could be anyone, it could be from journalists, from the media, or it could even be politicians and actual governments. Uh, SubhanAllah, it actually leads to, quite often, uh, an influx of conversions. And it's because it's getting people talking and thinking about Islam. And uh, SubhanAllah, Allah works in mysterious ways. We've even seen, there was an article in The Guardian recently, which spoke about how despite the horrors that the Palestinians are facing in Gaza, it's actually creating a trend of people looking into Islam and are actually embracing Islam in the West because they're looking at the Palestinians and how they're dealing with these horrors, with honour and dignity. And I guess they're kind of content in the sense that they understand that although their family members are being murdered around them, they're going to paradise So this is a test from Allah, a hardship, which uh, they'll be rewarded for in the end. So subhanAllah, it's like making people think, I want to learn about this belief system that these Palestinians have that keeps them strong, despite literally the most indescribable trauma that they're going through. And it's Islam. Without Islam, I don't know where the Palestinians would be right now. Islam is literally the only thing keeping them going because no one else is supporting them. Western governments, the international community has failed them. Only Islam and Allah is with them. Piers Morgan clearly doesn't get that. But again, let me come back to, to the one thing that we want to focus on today, which is uh, Piers Morgan's anti-Islam comments in what I describe as an interrogation of a Muslim doctor on his show. I'm sure that um, Muslim women, we know they face discrimination in Western society right now. Islamophobia is on the rise. Muslim women, especially those that wear the hijab, wear the niqab, they're the biggest, easiest targets for many Islamophobes. Just tell me, when you hear those type of Islamophobic tropes being pushed by Piers Morgan on his show, do you think that that could impact Muslim women? Because I'm sure this is the type of thing they have to deal with day in and day out on a street level. And to see a big TV personality engage in this pathetic, low-level Tommy Robinson-style rhetoric Uh, I'm sure that that must have a negative impact. Just tell me from that regard how that may impact you. I've not worn the hijab my whole life. So I started wearing it after I had my children. Initially, when I started wearing it, there was that fear, you know, of how are people going to take me? I remember stepping out the first time and people were looking at me and thinking, oh my God, are they looking at me because I've got a scarf on my head? You know, I think that's just more, you're a little bit self-conscious. When someone like Piers Morgan says these comments, there is an impact. I mean, we've seen with everything that's happening with Palestine, 
Palestine and Israel, there has been an impact in America. There has been people that have been murdered because of the things that have been said in mainstream media. So when people like Mears Morgan says these things about Muslim women, it might spark something in other Islamophobes and they might think it's okay to go and say not very nice things to Muslim women out in the streets, even online. Luckily, as a Muslim woman, I've never really received any racism face to face. There's a massive Muslim population, there's mosques and halal meat and everything nearby and we're quite lucky that we live in the UK and there is so many Muslims around. So I've never received it face to face. I do receive a lot online. That doesn't bother me because they're from faceless people that I don't know, especially since I've been doing a lot of videos about Palestine. I do receive quite a lot of racist comments. It's okay. It comes with the territory, I think. But it's sad because again, like I said, if there are women out there that are thinking about wearing the hijab, it might spark fear in them of, I don't want to be on the receiving end of that backlash of people that think that type of thing. But I think those women should really look at why they're wearing the hijab or why they want to wear the hijab. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for yourself. It's to protect yourself. You know, there's a reason why we'd wear the hijab and I think women should really look into it. I think men should look into it. Piers Morgan should definitely be looking into why we wear the hijab. It's to protect us and I will actually say that most women will feel more respected when they wear the hijab than when they don't. So I think it's really important for people to know why that is the case. You know, you're making sure that you're there for one man and one man only, whether you're married or not. That's why you cover yourself up and it's more empowering than it is to take everything off I think it's more difficult to keep a lot more clothes on than it is to take off so yeah I definitely think that people should look into it more yes absolutely Piers Morgan is rattled by this you can tell he was forced to issue a clarification the following day because of the backlash that he's received online Uh, a lot of Muslims are angry about it and their reaction is going viral he's clearly seen it my tweets to him caused him to block me (laughs) <laughs> so he's clearly seen my reaction, didn't like it and acted like uh, a typical snowflake and censored me, even though he runs a show called uh, Piers Morgan Uncensored. He didn't. He censored me, a, a Muslim journalist. But there we go. Um, I'm not going to act up on that too much, take it too personally. But um, yeah, he's rattled. It's clear. Now, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to him directly. Hopefully, inshallah, with the support of our viewers, he might even see it. Uh, if we uh, tag him in enough, who knows? So uh, just assume Piers Morgan's watching this. What message would you send to him following uh, the performance that you saw and his anti-Islam comments, as I call them, uh, in his previous show? If I could just first, just quickly, sorry, Robert, just talk about the clarification that he had. You know, the clarification sort of sounded very stereotypical of someone that's saying, I have a Muslim friend, I have a black friend, I have a brown friend, I'm I'm nice to Muslims. I don't think it was, again, genuine. And I think if he wanted to do a clarification, I don't think he should have had one of the biggest Islamophobes, Douglas Murray, on the same show right after doing that clarification. I mean, if you know who Douglas Murray is, he's a creep and a liar. He hates Muslims. He sensationalizes the truth to further his anti-Muslim agenda really and even called for Muslims to be thrown out of the UK during that interview so he should be arrested for racial discrimination and hate speech so I don't think that his clarification done him much good um, especially having someone like that on. In terms of Piers Morgan I do have a lot to say to him. First of all like I said to you earlier brother I really was rooting for Piers Morgan at the beginning I was saying you know he had people on like Mohammed Tajab he had lots of brothers on and sisters on as well um, you know, advocating for Palestine. And I thought, okay, this is someone that has both sides of the spectrum on and is really trying to be impartial. I knew that he was doing that for his own gain, of course. And I defended him. You know, I had people on my channel that hated him and I defended him and said he's giving a platform to Muslims and he's given us a voice. We should be grateful for that. I even said that, you know, Piers Morgan was great when he called it the Israeli Prime Minister and his party for being, you know, bigots. But it seems like it was all just tactics to keep the Muslims on side and tuning into his show. And obviously the mask slipped off when he was interviewing Dr. Wahid. I must admit, Piers, you had a lot of Muslims on and you had a lot of Muslims giving you credit for platforming us but in reality we were doing you the favour by providing you the content that goes viral. We're not uncivilised people, you're not better than us you know in the past you've supported global colonisation of the British Empire and if the West peers didn't rob, steal and take innocent people's lives then you and I wouldn't have the privileged circumstances that we have that we live in just now. The West is not civilised and if you think that we are then you 
you're deluding yourself. Carrying out centuries of tyranny, this isn't the first war that has caused so much upset and uproar and so many people losing their lives. This is just another one to add to the list, unfortunately, of Muslims being slaughtered. And your pathetic acknowledgement of the wrongdoing that is actually happening is disgusting and I'm very disappointed in the way that you have carried yourself in general with Muslims. I don't think you're impartial at all. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, uh, that was a fantastic, uh, strong message and I think that he should hear it. There's many voices which he censors. Uh, He's no champion of free speech. I think that's one thing which we have learned now. He's actually a cancel culture crusader Uh, That's how I think uh, he should be described now. And ultimately, I think that unless he apologizes for the very specific anti-Islam comments that he makes, he's going to have to be known and referred to going forward as an anti-Islam TV presenter. Uh, And I hope the Muslims will persist with this branding because it's the only way to to kind of uh, effectively hit back. There's a lot of questions now about whether Muslims should boycott his show. Uh, that's something yeah. which is being discussed as well. Why should Muslims go on the show now if it's just to boost his ratings and to sit there like we're lesser than him, um, for him to just talk down his nose at us? For for what? Believing in Islam as if that's some kind of a surprise. A Muslim believes in their religion. I even said that if a religious Jewish commentator had come on the show, uh, Judaism believes essentially the same or similar stuff regarding many issues like feminism, Uh, like same gender relationships that Islam does, would Piers Morgan have gone in so hard on him and condemned him for his beliefs, religious beliefs? I'm sure that wouldn't have happened. And I think that uh, the comments we've made have been very hard hitting and effective. Thank you very much for your time. I, inshallah, believe this won't be the only and last time that we speak to each other. And uh, I'll certainly be uh, encouraging people to go and check out your YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, Jazakallah khair for all of your pearls of wisdom and uh, your strong message to Piers Morgan. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.